Hello my friends, uh, it's good to see you again. This is my third video and this is going to be an exciting series that we're getting ready to do. We're going to discuss a lot of uh, different things and uh, I want to make it plain too that although these first videos will be uh, about oil painting that we're going to cover a lot of different things. I intend to uh, you know, work with you on some drawing uh, as well as computer stuff. I mean, even as just a fine artist or a commercial artist, you still need to know how to use Photoshop and a variety of uh, things you can do on it. For instance, if, you, if you're doing a painting that's going to be published, you need to know how to uh, scan it. And then, uh, depending, you know, most people can't afford the very large scanners. I know I can't. Uh, so, uh, you know, a uh, painting that I do, or I used to do for publishing, I'd have to scan six times. And then I would have to take all six scans and put them together in Photoshop to make the whole image. So I want to teach a lot of that kind of thing as well. But I'm excited about this because, um, as you can see, um, this is the beginning of a portrait that I am doing for Mark Farner. Mark Farner is the former lead singer and guitar player for the famous legendary band Grand Funk Railroad. Uh, when I was a teenager and young adult, I absolutely idolized these people. <laughs> I have, uh, I still have every uh, album they ever recorded. Uh, so to be able to do this for Mr. Farner is just a dream come true. Uh, so as far as my career goes, this is definitely uh, one of the high points and I'm thrilled and I thought uh, since we are doing a portrait now there's going to be a lot of things I can teach you along the way um, for instance here this is canvas uh, this is a little bit larger than what I normally work this is a 17 by 24 uh, averagely uh, normally I work uh, 16 by 20 uh, so this is a little bit larger um, but uh, um, excuse me, I have to drink water every once in a while. Um, but as you can see, I don't spend a whole lot of time on the drawing. Compared to the days when I was a commercial artist, uh, I would spend countless hours. I would spend uh, anywhere from two to four days of doing the drawing before I painted it. I was so sick of the painting before I even started putting painting on it that I was uh, I didn't even want to do it anymore. That's one reason why I retired from it. Uh, now that I painted oils on canvas, I basically just focus on getting the lines right, make sure everything is proper, because there's nothing worse than making a simple mistake like the eyes not being the right uh, proportion or you know a part you know the right space where you make a simple little error with the nose or the ears anything and then you have to go back mid painting and you see it and you have to try to change it uh it, that you know makes your painting ugly in ways because you have to put more layers of paint on it uh or you know in some cases with oil you can wipe it off but it's just countless hours of time that you're wasting plus all that creative energy that went into it that things like that have a tendency to bust the bubble uh, you know once you get going on this you want to keep the energy going and you know keep it everything positive and moving forward very important uh, a lot of people seem to think that I paint really fast I, I do I guess compared to the old days I mean uh, when I was a commercial illustrator I would spend anywhere from two to four weeks on a painting uh, this painting probably is not going to take me but five days, uh, maybe six, however long it takes. I want to make sure it's, uh, you know, the best that I can possibly do, uh, but I don't want to overdo it either, uh, you know, but, you know, this is, uh, it's a big deal to me. So, but I just wanted to show you that uh, simple tools I use, I don't use anything really special. I, I don't understand why you know, people spend tons of money. I buy these pencils little click it pencils that you can buy uh, in packs. I use those. Uh, the lead is good and dark. It works good. Uh, and a lot of times though, before I start using this pencil, I'll make 
quick little lines with a pencil like a 4H, something very light that doesn't show through, but just indications. And then once I'm sure that everything is the way uh, it, that I, I haven't made any mistakes in you know where I've, in the placement of the eyes or the mouth or or anything, then I'll go back with this pencil and start darkening it in. Okay. Now a friend of mine, Mark Kellick, who is also an artist, uh, an illustrator, uh, he turned me on to this. This is an electric racer. This is probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. Uh, one of the things I used to hate about canvas is if you had to erase. No matter what the eraser, it would put a dent in the canvas or it would smudge it, something terrible, you know, and, and stuff. But this thing here, it makes life easy. You know, you just press the button, put it on whatever it is you want to erase, boom, it's clean. It erases, no problem. That stuff, I think this thing cost me eight bucks. I bought uh, a pack of the erasers, the exchangeable erasers are like 50 and then they were like $2.50 and it uses one AA battery. One battery lasts forever, trust me. So it's a great investment, $8, I'm serious. I mean, you know, you can go out and get you one. It's great for any drawing. It erases a lot cleaner than most of the things you do. Uh, now, I'm not using it on this painting, but I do use this a lot. Um, and this will help save you some money as well. Uh, whenever I do a, especially a finished pencil painting or drawing, uh, or you know just a sketch or whatever, you want to uh, spray a fixative over it so that it won't smudge uh, later on down the road. I, I saw a lady on the internet the other day who's a, a brilliant artist and she works with uh, chalk, and I, I I can't understand how somebody could work with chalk as well as she does, but uh, I noticed a few of her paintings were smudged. And, you know, basically, by using a fixative, it would have solved that problem that would have never happened. Now, the thing is, if you go to the art store and you buy a spray fixative, oh, Lord, I think it's like 8 to $10 a can. Okay, but you can go to Big Lots and buy a can of aerosol hairspray, which has the same exact ingredients for a dollar. It works just as good, the whole, you know, everything so save yourself some money and choose this uh, the only thing I recommend is please wear a mask when you spray it or take it outside and spray it uh, yeah, I have COPD and emphysema so uh, you know I, I have to take a lot of precautions and Lord, I don't want to see that happen to you guys uh, down the road so take care of yourself please uh, that's it on this one uh, the next one I'm gonna be shooting probably here in a little while uh, we'll be going. Uh, we're going to start underpainting this, and we're going to mix up the paints for that. I'll show you a few little tips on underpainting. But uh, as we go, I'm going to tell you step by step. I'm going to show you how to paint the eyes. I'm going to show you how to paint the teeth, the colors that you use to mix them up. I'm going to teach you about using the cold colors of the flesh and the warm colors of the flesh. Uh, you know which colors you used, how to mix them and why they're used in the areas they're used in um, and whatever else we can come up to do with you know uh, to, to teach you and uh, and uh, you know move things along all right uh, see you on the next video y'all take care